A PGC is very rewarding, so is a BA in primary education. They're both rewarding as separate entities out there. PGC student, there's no such thing as a break. I'm just gonna warn you from now. Let me just tell you, why not? Let's be honest, there's not a break. But I want to actually make it where it's like a, um, like a duet, it'd be like, Primary, primary teaching, teaching with Dom. <laughs> and, and off key like that. Welcome back to Primary Teaching with Dom. Hello and welcome back to Primary Teaching with Dom. In today's video, I'm going to discuss the difference between the undergraduate in primary education and the PGCE. So if you're deciding, I don't know which one to do at this moment in time, then watch this video and then you can decide for yourself. So let's get into it. Now for quite a few of you, you're kind of, I bet you're wondering, oh, what's the difference? I want to go into teaching, but I don't know what route to take. An undergraduate degree, so a BA in primary education, gives you three to four years of experience of working in primary schools. You have the choice to decide where your specialities lie. So you can decide, oh, I want to be five and under for early years and probably nursery for some of you. Quite a few people want to do primary, so from the ages of five to 11. Or if you decide that you just want to be upper key stage two, so that's from, I think that is from year four and up. So you can then decide to be within that age bracket. Thing. I think it's either eight to 11 or nine to 11. Some people decide to do so. As an undergraduate, you have you have three as I said, and you do different modules within different modules within each one. So in a module, you'll be able to go to a different area where children will learn, like libraries and museums and research about that. You have the opportunity to find about policy, which I don't like. Um, <laughs> option to have the introduction to childhood to learn about. Um, different children also have the you also have a module where you will discuss past, present, and future. So you will discuss where schools were and where they evolved from, what they have been, so the past, so where they are right now, and then psh, where you will be in your teaching to be a super lovely teacher, as I know you will be. Please dis disregard if there's like light beaming down my head, like I'm some sort of saint. Um, it's because. I want to re-record this video because that one was horrible. In those three years, you have the opportunity to develop your learning. Every single one of those years, you will do a placement module. You will have an assessment. Yes, assessments are inevitable. Sorry. Sorry if you thought there was none. There is. Um, but especially on a BA, you would think there would be, wouldn't you? Every year, you will have the opportunity and not really the choice to go into schools because there's a primary education route of course you're going to go in there and you'll do different years so in the first year you could be in reception working with reception children for five weeks then the next year in your year two you could be placed in year six because i have a i have someone who's currently in my school who is doing a bachelor's honors degree in primary education and she's in year six yes with the sats and yes she's doing it and she's doing really quite well so every single year, the expectation in every single year grows as well. So in the first year, you're like, oh, you're trying to find your feet. It's okay, don't worry. Where well, you'll do like 50% of the teaching in your first placement. In the second one, you're still doing 50%, but the expectation has grown a little bit more. This is at the in-between where they're still thinking, oh, a little bit, oh, you're fine, oh, don't worry about it. But then they're like, no, come on, you've got to get it done. And in third year, I think it ups to 70% teaching, but don't quote me, different universities are different. And that is where you definitely will be held accountable. You're held accountable for everything anyway because you're in charge of children's education, but that's where it is. So I think primary education, the Bachelor Honours route, is for people that don't necessarily want to do something different in terms of an undergraduate degree and know that they want to do it and want to really, really, really unpick and unpick the theories, the theories behind it. Now, don't get me wrong. <laughs> A bachelor's honours degree in primary education is great and it gives you a lot of theory and everything behind it and it really develops you as a teacher because it takes you, it gives you the longer amount of time to do so. However, for those of you that think, mm, what if? Because I had that with myself. I really wanted to do a BA in primary education but I was thinking, what if? I'm 18 at that moment, what if I decide I want to change slightly? And I did a little bit, I wanted to then become a HR manager, 
which is quite interesting. And I was actually going to do a master's in HR. So I was going to go to college and all that, but I decided to get back onto my teaching because I found inspiration again. But for some of you that think, mm, well, I'm at the age now where I've done a history degree or I've done an economics degree or I've done a maths or sociology, which a lot of people tend to do. Um, sociology, sociology and psychology seems to be the one um, or vice versa. And you're like, ah, oh, but I want to get into teaching. How can I do that? Well, the PGC is here. Now, there are other routes like schools direct and I will try and link a card up there and that will tell you the routes and how to get into teaching. But specifically, I'm going to be talk about PGCE. Now, your PGCE, um, think about everything I've just said earlier. So all that underpinning, all those maths and English lessons you have to go to, all them science and foundation and going to alternative placements and doing your placements, doing that in three, four years. Imagine that all in one. One year, and I don't even class it as one year. I class it as like nine, ten months because that's what basically it is. You start in September and you finish in July. One bam, thank you, ma'am. For a lot of people, <laughs> for a lot of people, they finish a bit earlier. But I'm like, well, pff, whatever. Really, I got my job, so yeah. so a PGC for some for those of you that are thinking, now I want to do. I've yet the age of eighteen where you're thinking, no, let me do another degree and see if I love that and give myself more choice. Or for those of you that are older, already done the degree, already done something new and you're thinking I want to get into teaching. A PGC is a great route, the Postgraduate Certificate in Education. You get 120 days in school, so that's quite a lot of your time. If I calculate it at my at where I, where I am at, I've done I've had to do five weeks in one placement, five weeks in a con in an alternative placement, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a second, and I'm currently now doing ten weeks. At my uh, at my first placement, so five five ten, so twenty weeks essentially in school. Now, if you think about that, four eight twelve sixteen, that's about what four five months in school and the others in university. So, for those of you that are going into your PGC and thinking, oh, what to expect about it, and oh my goodness me, let me tell you really quickly. So, my timetable goes like this: Monday. I do three hours of English and three hours of maths where they underpin different kind of activities and the theory behind it. On Tuesdays, I then do a professional studies where I do that for two hours um, where you learn about professionalism, essays, um, being professional in schools, time management and so on. And then you will generally have another lecture about bullying or LGBT, about changing literature, about reading for pleasure and so on. That's just Tuesday. On Wednesday is a nice day because I love science, so I have science on Wednesdays from 9 to 12, which is lovely. On Wednesday, on Thursdays, I will tend to have a foundation topic which will last six hours, so from 9 to 3. And then on Friday, I will have another foundation topic that will last six hours, and that's literally in one week. <laughs> so can you imagine the tiredness that you feel afterwards? So that's basically it. You will be in placement, so your first placement you will be in, I was in year one, so you do that for five weeks. You will have an assignment linked to it. Then you will leave it and then go to another module, which they call Enhanced Studies at my university, but they're changing that now, so don't look and don't ask me because it's changed. But I am going to make a video about uh, every single placement and my Enhanced Studies. So, And you have the opportunity to do many different, so like primary education, no, um, children's literature, learning through Shakespeare, um, primary science, primary history, and the list goes on. Then I'll have my second placement, which is five weeks at, a con at an alternative phase. So I went from year one to year five. You then still have a essay that is linked to your enhanced studies, which then blends into your placement. Then after you have a break, which they call a so-called break, which I don't, as a PGCE student, there's no such thing as a break. I'm just going to warn you from now. Let me just tell you. Why not? Let's be honest. There's not a break. Um, I'm looking forward to the break next week where I don't have anything to do, which is lovely. But up until now, people say, when are you having a break? I said, when? <laughs> do you even know? I don't know myself. You can tell me. So then I'm going, I'm now in halfway through my placement now, so I'm five weeks through at the end of Friday, and then when I come back after half term, I've got five more weeks. 
and that's basically it so for those of you that are thinking uh oh, what one do i want to do because you're now 18 or you're just you you want to get into university and you're thinking oh which one should i do i will say for those of you that really don't want to rush into it and really want to take your time and learn everything slowly and efficiently and have that progression every single year then do the bachelor's honors degree in primary education and that will do you well because they still have a qts year where they recommend you for that and you still have to pass every single placement like you would do on a pgce for those of you that are thinking now nah, i don't have time for that you know i'm older at this point i want to get it over and done with i love teaching i kind of like that if i make a mistake now i've got to fix it quickly and, and address it because i'm going into something new the next week then go to a PGC. A PGC is very rewarding, so it was a BA in primary education. They're both rewarding as separate entities out there. And you're both doing the same thing. But if you think about it this way, just the last little um, the last little bit, if you think this will be my, pri my BA in primary ed, and this will be my PGC. So you start off at the same block, and a PGC, you know, a BA will go like this, slowly like that until you get to the year like that and a pgc is like this so it's really really quick it's intense a pgc is intense you will cry you will laugh you will whatever you will do but that will be my next video on what to expect during a pgc but yeah those are the differences really you learn exactly the same thing but one does it in three four years and one does it in nine months so you've got to work up your options so for those of you that really just want to get it over and done with and want to get into teaching because you have family or you're old enough at that time where you just know what you want to do, PGC. For those of you that are thinking, ah, oh, I really want to learn a teaching profession like really solely and do many modules to gain that to see if I really, really like it, then do a BA in primary education because what's, what's to stop you? So I hope you enjoyed that video. My last video was like 26 minutes. But I really wanted to just condense it and really make it precise and all that. So, welcome back to Primary Teaching with Dom. Please tell me if you, if I should change that. Actually, I'm not going to change it. I'm not going to lie to you. But I want to actually make it where it's like a um like a duet. It'd be like Primary Primary Teaching Teaching with Dom <laughs> and, and off key like that. But yes, I hope you enjoyed this video. And the next video will be on what to expect. Um, with a PGCE for those of you that are going into it and have no idea what you're letting yourself in for so yeah I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one thank you for watching please subscribe up here and watch my two previous videos down here and I really do hope you have a great day and I'm going to have a great day myself until then bye